on YouTube. Welcome to Hope Church Ridge Vellin. It's really good. Today we're going to have some worship led by John and Heather and then Andrew Thomas is going to come and continue our theme on uh, the names of God and uh, we'll follow on from what Ryan brought last week. And so I'm now going to try and do something um, really clever, the two of us oh. together, and I'm going to just pray now for, for John and Heather as they lead us in worship. And then we'll go for it. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, that we can come together. Thank you, Lord. We are now in a position that when it does snow, we don't have to cancel the meeting. We can just move it onto Zoom. Lord, <laughs> never again will we need to cancel a meeting <laughs> at Hope Church Red Vellin because we can always do Zoom it. But Lord, I pray, Father, just bless them now as we come and have this time of worship in your name. Amen. Hopefully this will work. I'm about to mute everybody including you. Okay, no worries. Can you all see the screen and hear us okay? Cool, Fantastic. Um, thumbs are good. Two Sweet. Thumbs. <laughs> cool, uh, Father, just meet with us as we lift your praises now. Uh, may we have an awesome time of worship today. Amen. Amen. Before us, you're the bright. 
everybody there i saw them i like them good waving Show me grace, you've lifted my shame. 
Thank you for your mercy. Thank you that you have washed us white as snow. Today we have an incredible, uh, very visual <laughs> example of what being you know, washed white as snow looks like. Uh, thank you for that. That's awesome. Thank you for your love. Thank you for dying on the cross and taking away not just our sin, but all of our shame too. Thank you for taking all away our guilt <laughs> and all the other things. That do us no good. Amen. Thank you so much. Have I? I could just spotlight the wrong people. <laughs> Sorry, Graham and Anna. I, I'm going to take you off spotlight, Graham and Anna. It is lovely to see you both. <laughs> and uh, it's nice that everyone can see you. So I'm now going to remove the spotlight. There we go. Hey. But it was nice. It was just great that it wasn't a moment where Graham was pushing the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how it worked. So it's really good. I just thank you, John and Heather. I really do enjoy these times of worship. So Liz... It tells me I need to sing a little quieter so she can hear the tune. <laughs> <laughs> Not the one you make up. <laughs> Not the one apparently I was making up. But there we go. I, you know, I was enjoying myself. You were worshipping with your awe, but then I was you had. worshipping with my awe, <laughs> which is good. Anyway, guys, it is so good. It's so lovely seeing you all. I love seeing it on Zoom and just seeing each one of you and seeing your faces, and and it is just so good. I've been going through. Um, we, we've been going through the Psalms in the Bible studies and this week we looked at Psalm 31 and it, it's, someone described it as a Psalm of the four seasons. It starts in autumn, it goes to winter and boy, it's a cold winter in that Psalm. <laughs> I think John and Heather described it as a zombie period and then it goes to spring and then summer. And it's a sun that I've really been living with me all week, actually. And even this morning, just with the snow everywhere, just the, the suddenly how everything can change. And I was just thinking about this week, how we have a number of you have been praying in different situations. We were praying in our life group on Wednesday night about the, the, the flooding and just the, the TAF getting higher and, you know, thinking of families who have been impacted by, by the flooding in the past. It was like, oh God, please don't let that happen again. Especially when you've got, you know, Kevin and Murray there and, and the Thomases there and, you know, thinking of the pits and thinking, oh God, please don't let it happen. And it wonderfully it didn't. And 
yeah, and I was just thinking about how in a moment things can change and just even when we were all coming on, just seeing, you know, Tim and Alison and Sam and Kevin and Miyuri and Amir and just thinking, wow, in a bit, something can change. It is so wonderful. But I just want to read these verses before I hand over to Andrew. And it says, love the Lord, all you saints. The Lord preserves the faithful. I just want to encourage you today. You have been faithful. Mm. You know, it's such a weird, weird time. I just want to encourage you. Your faithfulness will be rewarded. Your persistence to keep going. But he abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. That goes back to uh, the winter season. So, so, you know, it's kind of, that's the bit where David's going, no, 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 really. But in the context of this, be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. And that's what I want to bring to you today is be strong and let your heart take courage, all of you who wait for the Lord. So, Father, I pray for everyone here today, everyone who's watching online as well. Lord, you just encourage us to be people who are waiting for you, faithfully persevering and going for it, to see your kingdom come, to see your name lifted up high in all that we do, in your name. Amen. Amen. Just a few quick notices. Uh, on this week, we've got life groups. Uh, will be happening Tuesday, Wednesday with the Zoom groups or whatever you want to call them. And then Friday, we've got the Bible study. Can I just encourage you as well, just with the ongoing uh, building fund, it's, I really encourage you to be praying, please, because actually we've now got a number of grants. John and Heather have been working really hard, put a number of grants in, grant applications in, and uh, we're just praying that they come through. And it would just be quite amazing. I had a conversation with someone this week, uh, socially distanced in a shop. And they said, oh, is it true the church is buying the... The sports bar, I said, yeah, yes. And you know that moment of real faith, you say, yes. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, and it's like, <gasps> you know, so, but, but it was just really good that people are wanting to know and it's been really, really encouraging. And on that, I'm now gonna add the spotlight. I can see that CAF has um, disappeared. And so there it is, me and Mr. Thomas and Liz. And uh, I'm gonna pray for Andrew now as he brings uh, God's word and it continues on the theme of the names of God so father I pray just encourage Andrew right now Lord we do love him and we just thank you for him thank you for all that he is and Lord thank you he's good news and bless him now in your name amen amen you need to unmute just to let you know can you hear me <laughs> excellent okay I'd like to welcome everybody to the um, second in our series on the names of God. Um, and I really enjoyed last week, um, Brian brought us the name of God, Elohim, and I'm going to bring the next in the series. And when we looked at this as a leadership team about looking at, at doing a series on the names of God, John very kindly um, told us that there was over 900 names for God. So I'm, I'm hoping, you never know, that we may well have finished this series by the time lockdown ends. Might be a possibility. I'm hoping that might be the case. We'll have to see. Depending on Bo Bungling Boris and Mark Drip Dripford, really, but we, we will see. Um, and names are very important, aren't they? Um, as you know, my name is Andrew, but I'm sure my parents could have just as easily called me Robert or David. But names are quite important. So I looked a little bit into what Andrew meant. And I'm sure many may be thinking it probably means going by the Andrews in hope that it's he of little hair. <laughs> but it isn't he of little hair. It is warrior, someone who is bold, courageous, and strong. I quite enjoyed that, to be honest. So the other thing as well is Bible names are very significant as well. When Jesus renamed Simon Peter, it was because that act of renaming him made him the rock. And it says in the word, Peter would be the rock that the church would be built on and the um, gates of Hades will not prevail against him. And also there's um, Abraham who was renamed because his new name means the father of um, multitude. 
Sarah, Abraham's wife, means mother of nations. And Isaac means, and I didn't know this until I read it up, but it actually means he will laugh. And the reason he was named that was because both his parents, when the angels came to them and said, this time next year, you're going to have a son, they both laughed. They both couldn't see it because they were both old. Sarah was barren and they just didn't see a way that it could happen. As I said, um, Ryan brought an excellent word last week on um, the God Elohim. Uh, the name emphasized God power and Ryan spoke a lot about God at creation. And this week, I'm going to be talking about Yahweh. And I'm going to be first reading a text, two texts. The first one is from Exodus 3.14. And the second one I'll be reading a bit later is from Exodus 6.3. In Exodus 3.14, it says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Today, we often see Yahweh written in our Bibles as Jehovah. And scholars do not really agree on the um, exact meaning. Um, but in Exodus 6, it says again, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But my name, Yahweh, I was not known to them. So I was wondering what God really meant by this. They knew God. What he means was they didn't really know God close up and personal. But when I looked into the meaning of Yahweh, it said things like the self-existent one, the God who is loyal, the Lord who keeps his promises and his word. But most importantly is I am who I am. And in this sense of the burning bush, it brings us to see that God, the Yahweh God, is a God of nearness, a God who comes to us in our need, face to face. In the burning bush, it wasn't that God said, came, called down from heaven and said to Moses, look, this is what I want you to do. He came, close up and personal. And this was fulfilled in Jesus. In, it says, "In the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. God came and dwelt among us and experienced all that suffering, all that heartache, because he loves us. A little bit about the background of Yahweh. It appears 5,000 times in the Old Testament is usually translated Lord. Sometimes the name is attached to other words. I'm just going to have a look at a couple of these. I'm not going to go into too many because I know in our series we're going to look at a few of these. The first one, Yahweh Jireh or Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. And many of us would have heard this. In Genesis 22, 14, the Lord sees and provides Abraham. Because on Mount Mor Moriah, as he lifted the knife to kill his own son, God provided a ram caught up in the thicket to take Isaac's place. And this is where the, it was first called the Lord will provide, Yahweh Yaira. Another one is Yahweh Rapha. Many of you know this one as well, the Lord who heals. And this was seen after the Israelites had crossed the Red Sea, they came to a place called Mara, a lake of water. They wanted to um, restock um, and re-energize um, their livestock and themselves and take from the water, but it was bitter, undrinkable, even poisonous. They cried out to God. Moses cried out in frustration. And the tree hit the water and made the water sweet as honey. And there, this is where it was coined the God who will heal. And also there's Yahweh Nisi, the God is our banner. You know, when in, in back, back in the day, armies used to march with their banner in front of them. They used to march, and enemies would be would flee in terror, seeing this banner. And the um, head of that army would always be in the front. Not like that nowadays, I know. When the Lord called himself Yahweh Nissi, he meant he stands shoulder to shoulder with his people in battle. And Yahweh appears in a great many human names in the Old Testament. Anything, any name ending in AH was a sort of similar to Yahweh. So you think Elijah, Hezekiah, Nehemiah. But the most important one in the Old Testament was Joshua, which is translated in our Bibles, Joshua. The name means Yahweh saves. And that's what he did in the days of Joshua, isn't it? He brought the Israelites out the wilderness from the kings who lived on his border. 
he helped them. He, he brought them to the promised land. It's really important, the word Joshua, because, as you know, it's another name for Jesus. Why was our Lord given the name instead of some other? Because he was also a savior. He saved his people. He saved all his people. He's continually saving his people. He shall save his people from his sins. I just want to quickly look before we finish on five implications of I am. The first is I am never had a beginning. He says I am. He doesn't say I was or I became. We can all imagine what it might be perhaps never to die. It not, might not be easy, but we can imagine it. We can imagine tomorrow. We can imagine the next day. We can imagine the next year. We can imagine 30 years. But we can't really imagine not having a beginning. And in this, we can grasp the self-existence of God. He needed nothing to bring him into existence. He depended on nothing. He never had a beginning. He was simply there. There is nothing before God. The second one is I am does not change. God's not determined by any outside factors or forces. Cass will tell you that I am hugely influenced by outside forces and factors. I tend to um, fixate on them far too much when I should be fixating on God. But he is who he is. He is not subject to the same changes we are. He foresees all circumstances. Nothing in the world takes him by surprise or changes him. Why would he change when he's perfect? I am does not change. The third one is I am is the source of life. Yahweh is like the bush that was on fire. It wasn't actually burning. The fire was pure fire. It was not being filled by the bush, but purely by himself, by I am. He is the creator. And as the creator of life, existence and energy finds its source in him. Energy finds its source in I am. And since he's the source of life, he is also the source of our purpose and our meaning. Outside of him, there is no, no purpose or meaning. I am does what he wants. They're like my children in that respect then. Yahweh does what he wants to do. I am who I am. You can also say, he, I do what I do. He is not bound by any other constraints in any way. He's absolutely sovereign to do what he pleases. He is sovereign. He does what he wants. And that's a good thing. The last one is Yahweh defines himself. We all would admit we have different opinions and thoughts about God. When God says, I am who I am, he calls us to take him for who he is. He is who he is. Everybody's opinion of what God is isn't equal. We cannot take him for what we want him to be, but only for what he reveals himself to us. Therefore, we must strive to know him for who he is instead of what we want him to be. Yahweh is self-defining. We don't define Yahweh, but God defines himself. So in closing, the, I want to say the, God, the Lord who visited um, Israel in Egypt, who visited in the wilderness in Canaan, has now visited us in Christ. He came to visit us. And not only did he come to visit us, he was taken back up into heaven and he left his spirit with us so that we can always have that closeness that Moses had on the mountain at the burning bush with God. God wants us to be near him. God wants us to be with him face to face. He became a man forever for us. He suffered for us. He suffered humiliation. But he re retained his humanity. And this same Jesus sympathizes with us when we struggle, when we need healing, when we need guidance. He's with us 24-7. We should be very, very thankful that Yahweh, especially now in the, in the form of Jesus, has come to be with us and has not only come to be with us, but has stayed with us and will continually be with us. I am who I am is with us always and will always be there. I'm just going to end in prayer. Lord, I thank you that you are who you are and that you say I am who I am. I thank you, Lord, that you are a strength to us, Lord, that you bless us and you guide us, Lord. I thank you that we can be near to you, especially in times like now when 
we know so many people are struggling with lockdown and the pandemic. I just pray, Lord, that when we do feel ourselves struggling, we know that you're near us, Lord. We know that you're close and that we can turn to you and just speak to you, Lord. And one to one, openly and assuredly, that you will listen and that you will act on what we say, Lord. We do thank you, Lord, for your glory. And we thank you, Lord, that you are who you are. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Oh, Pleasure. Oh, do the share the screen thing. Do the share screen thing first. Cool. So yeah, there's there's quite a lot of songs that talk about like God's name and in your name, in the name. Um, so we're not going to run out of songs anytime soon no, for, for things to do with God's <laughs> name either. So uh, today's uh, song that is about that is is a good old classic. I'm going to sing uh, "Blessed Be Your Name." You're the only one that I could live for 
That was brilliant. I enjoyed that. <laughs> and you it was great. I was wondering where which songs were gonna make an appearance then. It was brilliant well, though. Absolutely fantastic. Earlier, he just kept changing into yeah. different songs to try and throw me off. Eventually I got told off. <laughs> when you started adding in Christmas songs. Yeah, Christmas yeah. songs was too far. And away. I think it was impressive that you're able to do it while being videoed so that you can get told off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was the really impressive. Uh, Mr. Thomas, that was brilliant, Andrew. Fab. That was so, so fantastic. And I just find it so encouraging that as we look at the names of God, just suddenly you get hold of this incredible sense of just who he is, the vastness of God. The fact he has name upon name upon name upon name. And as you explore the name, you find more and more and more. But those two, uh, what Ryan brought and what Andrew brought, are real introductions and allow us now to go and start exploring some of the names. So next week I will be kicking off with um, The Lord is Our Shepherd. The Lord is My Shepherd, which uh, gets very personal and <laughs> will be fun. So that's something to look forward to. So those who are watching online, I want to thank you so much. We're going to stop recording now to bless you and hope you see you soon. Bye.